Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Welcome to another episode of our series, The Mailbag from the Deen Show. This is your host, Yas Safadi. In today's mail, we have a really profound and deep question. A question that has plagued humanity since the beginning of time. And the question is very simple. If there is a God who creates, then did this God create evil? If he didn't create it, who else created it? In other words, did God create evil or not? That's a simple question. Did God create evil or not? And in response to this, uh, I, I, I start off uh, with a little prelude and I say that this question, as I said, has plagued humanity from the beginnings of time. And every single religion has offered different responses to this question. And in fact, even within religions, you've had various movements within Judaism, within Christianity, within Islam, within Hinduism, within Zoroastrianism. Every single religion has tried to give various responses to what we call in English the, the issue of theodicy or the question of God and evil. If there is a God and if there is evil, what is the relationship between the two? That is a very profound and deep question. Well, we as Muslims have a deep and profound response to this and that is uh, as follows. First and foremost, we as Muslims do not believe that there is anything that is pure evil. We do not believe in the existence of ultimate evil. Everything that God has created, everything, has some benefit and some good. And some things have nothing but benefit and good. But there is nothing that comes from God that is pure evil. And let me repeat that so that you understand. Some of the matters that God reveals or sends down, for example, the speech of God, God's revelation, the messengers, they are good and pure in and of themselves. The book of God is nothing but purity and good. There is no evil in this book, there is no, uh, there is no aspect of, 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 of anything negative from this book. The book is positive. Believing in it is good. Reciting it is good. Worshipping God through it is good. Reading it is good. Everything is good about it. The, the book is the revelation of God. It is the speech of God. There is nothing evil in it. God's creation also. God's creation usually has good and a little bit of harm as well. But this harm is not an intended harm. It is a harm that comes about not because God created it to do harm, but because there is a lot of good and then there's some harm also in there. And the harm leads to good. The harm that is present in any aspect brings about good. For example, God says in the Quran that drinking alcohol, we believe as Muslims that is a no-no, you don't do that. God says drinking alcohol has some good to it. There's, there's some positive, but there's also bad and the bad outweighs the good. There's good in it. That's why everybody loves to drink alcohol. There's some good in it, but there's negatives as well. And the negatives outweigh the positives in this case. So even alcohol is not pure evil. There's some good that comes out of it. In fact, Satan or Shaitan, Iblis we call him in Arabic, even the creation of, of Satan has some good. And Satan is, generally speaking, the embodiment of evil. But still, we believe as Muslims that there's some good out of it. What good is there? Well, the fact that you know that there is an enemy out there trying to harm you, trying to mislead you, it makes you conscious, it, make, it puts your guards up. The fact that you will enter paradise by not obeying Satan is good for you. It might not be good for Satan, but it's good for you. And so every element of the creation is either pure good or there's good and bad. And so there is no such thing as pure evil. Also, we, 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 we come to another point, and that is that you will never be able to judge what evil is completely, especially in the actions of God around you. When something happens, a tsunami wave happens, a, 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 a thunderstorm happens, and, and tremendous disaster, hurricane, tornado, earthquake, people will say, why did this evil happen to us? And the response is, indeed, some evil came out of that. Nobody can deny, but there's also good that comes out of it. What is the good that comes out of it? Well, mankind shows their true nature in their sympathy and mercy. They, they send money, they send food, they come together at times of distress. And a lot of good comes out of it as well. Let me ask you a simple question. If there were no people who were starving, how could you show your generosity? If there was no evil, how could you show your good? And so there has to be some negatives in order for you to bring the positives. There's another aspect as well. You can say, okay, fine, I understand that 
when there's a tsunami wave, I can be generous to the people who are affected and so God rewards me. How about the people who suffered at that wave, who lost a child, somebody who lost a daughter, who lost a parent, how about them? The response is very simple. You are judging negative and positive based upon this world. And you're forgetting that there's something called a hereafter. And it is possible that the rewards that a person gets in the hereafter for a problem that he or she suffers is much more than if he didn't suffer that problem at all. In fact, we believe as Muslims, if you're patient and you put your trust in God and you show your, your, your fortitude, your belief in God, we believe that in the hereafter, you would actually have wanted more problems so that you could have shown your patience to get more rewards. When you see the blessings of God, when you see how God has rewarded you for your suffering, you will in fact wish, not in this world, because none of us wishes it, and that's natural, but in the hereafter when it's all gone and done, when it's all been there, and you see the rewards of God, you will actually wish that, oh, why wasn't I tested more so that I could be rewarded more? Because you are rewarded much more than what you deserve. And that is also a belief that we hold as Muslims. So you are judging evil based purely on this world and there could be good in it. Also, even forgetting the hereafter, even in this world, let me ask, ask you a frank question. How many times have you done something and you were so sure that there was good in that thing? And then within a week, a month, a year, you regretted your decision and you said, oh man, I shouldn't have done that. That was a big mistake that I did. How many times have, has that happened in your own daily life? You thought something was good and it turned out to be evil. Conversely as well, how many times something happened to you thought that was bad, but then in retrospect, in hindsight, you're like, oh, you know, that was actually better than happened. In other words, you notice your own, your own fallibility. You notice your own limited wisdom. When you experience your limited wisdom in your own daily life, why don't you just give up that wisdom to God and you say, you know what? God, you created me, you gave me everything that I have, you've taken me so far, I put my trust in you, that everything that happens, it happens for the best. And that's exactly what we believe as Muslims. Nothing happens to you except that it is for your own good, whether you realize it or not, in this world or the hereafter. So to respond to the question, indeed, everything of the world happens by the knowledge of God and the will of God, and God creates everything, we affirm that. But that doesn't mean that we ascribe evil to God. We don't ascribe evil to God. There is no such thing as pure evil. Rather, we say Allah created everything and portions of His creation. Some of His creation has good and bad. But even the bad in it, even the evil in it, it leads to good. And it is necessary for this evil to exist in order to manifest the good. And so we leave it at that and we put our, our trust and our judgment. Uh, we, we, we don't judge God. We say Allah is the all wise. We know for our experiences that our wisdom is limited. Indeed, God knows what is best and He is the most loving and the most merciful and the most wise. And we leave that to Him and we say Allah knows best why everything is happening. It happens for a divine wisdom and decree. And if you believe in God and you put your trust in Him, then we have a firm commandment in the Quran that everything that happens, happens for our own best, whether we realize it or not. I hope that that answers your question in a very basic level. And of course, there's so much more that can be said about that. This brings us to the conclusion of this episode. I'll see you uh, in an, for another question in another episode of The Mailbag on The Dean Show. Until then, Assalamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh.